All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Team LDLC versus London Conspiracy. My name is Kyanite, and alongside me is the one, the only, Chewy. What's up, dude? Not too bad whatsoever. I've just had to edit a few microphone settings, so let me know if you hear some people uh, talking in the background. Unfortunately, my parents have some guests around at this second, so uh, if you do hear some oh, weird chatting in the background, it's that. But I, I hope I've sorted it out, so you should should be able to hear me fine. But yep. Yeah, and on some more important topics, LDLC versus London Conspiracy. Uh, I'm excited to see who's going to take this one. It's going to be interesting to see what happens on Nuke here, of course. Um, but the players are just warming up, ready to go. And uh, Kainai, who have you got your bets on for this game? LDLC. It's as simple as that. And uh, to be fully honest, I think the fact that the random map chosen uh, has gone to Nuke and the fact that LDLC will be starting as... Uh, counter terrorists will really really help them build momentum and build a good lead going into the second half because I think if they can win the pistol round capitalize on it and then get that AWP in the hands of Kaylee nice and early and maybe perhaps send him outside or send him towards ramp room to do a lot of damage then I see no reason as to why LDLC can't take this one let's 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 keep in mind that they beat Hellraisers they beat Epsilon a few weeks back at Dreamhack Valencia sure their online results haven't been great but then again let's be honest who's online results nowadays prior to ESL 1 have been great you know what I'm yeah, trying to say exactly. yeah exactly it's kind of been just a, a mixed bag with online results recently not too much to really gather um, in some respects towards that and this is the thing with LAN especially in a setting where it's best of one in the group stages and anything can happen at any point and that's exactly why we love it you know a lot of people were saying that Hellraisers were going to be the favourites against Epsilon and then Hellraisers got absolutely smashed on Inferno so this is what we love about it this is why things can be unpredictable um, my bet personally again is going to be on LDLC I think myself um, going with the majority of the community by uh, the looks of things on Lounge I think it's standing at about 68% uh, or something around that mark uh, going for LDLC for this one but at the same time um, I think that London Conspiracy are in with a good shout of getting some good rounds on the board and, and potentially getting a, an upset here if you can call it really an upset um, you know we know that they're a strong team they performed really well just a couple of weekends ago at Gfinity 3 and they've certainly got the firepower to be able um, to get some good rounds on the board but um, of course starting on the T side you're going to want to get that early pistol round yeah, and even though Nuke is somewhat of a slightly CT-sided map, I think it's safe to say that you'd expect the pistol round to go in favour of the terrorists who have the Glocks, and if they buy up armour and just rush around together as one solid unit, they're technically like one massive running nega. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this uh, LDLC lineup, and then we'll jump over to the group. So Kaylee, Orpa, probably not on par with the likes of Kenny S., just yet, but he's definitely one of the best AWPers in the game. Happy in-game leader for LDLC. I rate him a lot. I think he's a really intelligent um, in-game leader. He makes a lot of... he's quite adaptive. He makes calls in the middle of a game, and that's really difficult to do, because you've got to not only receive the intel from your teammates, but you've got to basically process all the information in such a short amount of time, and then tell your team where you, where, where, where you think the best... Uh, place to go is. Apex needs no introduction, a big boy from CS Source, great aimer, Maniac, his name speaks for him, for his uh, for himself, and <laughs> Uzi, Uzi was sort of the player that people weren't too sure about in LDLC, people were thinking, is Uzi really good enough, maybe they need to switch him out, but, to be fully honest to him, in recent weeks he's really stepped it up and uh, he's, he's, he's definitely shown us exactly why he's in this LDLC lineup, and the thing is, I'd sit and talk about London Conspiracy, but we've got no time because the game has started. But London Conspiracy, we saw what they what they did at G3, and who knows, they might be able to do it again. And Chewy, why don't you take us away for the pistol? Yeah, pistol round it is, and we've actually got armor for quite a few players. Three of the T squad deciding to go for that early armor buy, and four of LDLC starting things off with that as well. We'll see what comes into favor there as we start here on Nuke. Now, the guys on the on the first English stream. Uh, told us how the veto system works and there are seven maps in the map pool you have four veto so that's two for each team is oh. wow Kaylee gets two <laughs> lovely shots onto Polly and Rubino to start off here and that's a great start for the CT side but London Conspiracy they're on the upper A bomb side they're gonna get that bomb down successfully and that's obviously one of the key factors here 
for the T side on this pistol round to get that bomb down. Uh, but what I was saying is, yeah, seven maps in the map pool. There's four vetoes, and then out of the final three left, it's all random. And the random map chosen here was going to be Nuke. It's back and forth play. Skirt's got to pick up this kill here. It's not going to happen. The CTs get a lovely uh, take on that A-bomb site. Didn't have enough time to defuse. They haven't got any kits, I don't believe. But it will be the first round going in favour of the CT side hit. There we go. Bomb defused. LDLC picking up the first round with only one casualty, and that's Uzi. Yeah, and apologies that the uh, game wasn't in full screen. Sorry about that. No one... Uh... Hashtag blame Kino. Hashtag blame Kino. Anyways, 1-0 in favour of LDLC, and you know what? Kaylee deserves a pat on the back. Three 1-USPs that round, and when you've got a player as deadly as Kaylee in your, in your side, then I can't help but rate LDLC as favourites. But again, we saw what what LC were capable of doing at uh, G3. There were some people who were calling it out as a fluke, but I'm not too sure. I mean, me and Yuchui were sat behind them. They were playing against teams who were genuinely putting a shift in. And, oh, yeah. Um, it, it was really well played from them. But anyways, let's uh, forget about G3. We're here at Cologne as Happy is uh, going to be sat on top of Hut. He's going to drop one. Polly's going to come round the back and drop Happy. But, uh, yeah, it was an easy anti-eco for LDLC. 2-0 is the score. And when we were doing Nip versus Wolf, I got all the eco rounds. Or the Joe Miller rounds, <laughs> as they used to be called. And so far, I've got all the eco rounds on this game. So if I keep on getting all these eco rounds, I think I might as well just walk off right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we'll the early see. buy Obviously coming in from LC. Big round. Yeah, it is going to be an early buy. They only got two. Down. They've only had three frags so far um, in the game. One each for Rain, Rubino, and Polly. But because they got that bomb down in the first round, that was big for them. Um, and the fact that three of them bought armor and then died pretty much straight away to Kaylee's one shot with that USP didn't really do too much bad things to their economy. So here we go. First full rifle round. Pretty much we got. We have got a couple of pharmacists still for LDLC, and that's going to be Polly down to six HP. That's not what you want in a player like Polly. Of course, we know him as a top AWPer in the scene, really, really dominant with that gun. Um, but I'm not quite sure when he's going to pick up for it. He hasn't saved and just gone for a pistol here to decide to save up for it in the fourth round. He's just gone straight for that AK-47. So no casualties as of yet, though. Still one minute left on the clock here. And uh, if you were the T side here, Kai and I, looking at their positioning, where would you potentially be thinking of pushing with that bomb? Well, to be honest, I think they need to try and get an entry frag and, and, and capitalize on the entry frag. They are up against Happy and Uzi, who both have Famases. And, of course, they have the AK-47s, which is a one bullet to the head, then dead weapon. So, uh, I don't know. We just, they're, they're playing a patient game. The thing is, they need to be careful not to leave it too late, because if they leave it too late, then uh, LDLC will realize, hold on a second, there's 20 seconds to go, They're all there's flashes and nades coming towards ramp room, they surely are going to dedicate towards ramp room, and talking about ramp room, well, LDLC have just given London Conspiracy a free entrance into this lower bomb site, which is definitely an interesting choice from them. Apex is going to drop down, Happy will nail PRB, the new addition, of course, for London Conspiracy in the face, and well... A great defense from LDLC. I, I can't fault it. No, you can't. When they managed to push in there, you know, they didn't even allow the bomb to get planted there for London Conspiracy. And we saw LC take it so slowly over towards the ramp room, only starting to push down there aggressively and getting onto that lower bomb site with about 30 seconds or so left to go. And they weren't able to do anything special down there. L, uh, LDLC pushed in with great fashion, only one player going down. And. They're going to get rewarded for it because they forced London Conspiracy onto another eco here by the looks of things. We'll see what London Conspiracy can do with that eco, and that's a good start. Skirk's going to take down Maniac to start things off here, Kaino. Yep, and of course, LC, they have the CZ-75. We saw Wolf utilize them really well. Um, but Polly, unfortunately, is stuck with only a Glock in hand, a smoke on his belt, whilst Rubino tries to save an M4 and he's dropped one so that's a start but he's still got three more angry Frenchies to try and push through and Apex isn't going to let him do it. 4-0 and so far LDLC have looked solid, they've looked comfortable. Uh, I haven't really seen much from London Conspiracy. I didn't really like that really slow methodical approach from them when they had the AK-47s mm. but you mentioned uh, Polly and his orping early on and here it is, the big green gun has finally come out. 
uh, and another thing to take into account that we haven't actually got one on the LDLC side so they're just happy to stick with the rifles they've got four M4s and an AK-47 in hand and Polly with the Orc he can be dangerous with it and it's the time for him to be dangerous with it uh, uh, yeah London Conspiracy not with the best of starts 4-0 down here and the more rounds that you can get on the T side the better and we'll take it back to G3 just quickly I know it's two different teams but Virtus Pro were down in the second map of the grand final 12-3 against Titan they moved on to the CT side on the second half and won 16-12, I do believe, with an absolutely crazy comeback. So, London Conspiracy can still potentially do it. Uh, they're not out of this one yet, but they need to get that ball rolling soon. And just a quick thanks to all 18,000 viewers of you here on the stream. I believe that's actually our top number that myself and Kai and I have had on our lovely stream. So, thank you to all of you tuning in. We hope you're enjoying the action. But here we go into round number five. First picks going in favour of LDLC, Rain and PRB. The first two men down here for the Norwegian squad. Happy has also gone down for LDLC, but that bomb looks like, once again, it could be making its way to the ramp room where Maniac's going to spot them. Skirk is going to go down. Polly responds with the AWP. And it's a three on two situation here, but the T's, they're very, very split up here, Kai, mate. Yeah, they are, but Rubinho has gone unnoticed in ramp room. He's going to drop Maniac. Polly, talking about going unnoticed, I think, has gone unnoticed himself. He's going to be coming down secret, and the bomb will go down. It's Polly versus Uzi, and Uzi wins that battle, so Polly's going to lose that AWP. And now, it's the weight of the world on the shoulders of Rubinho, the Portuguese-Norwegian man, and he's not going to be able to salvage it. 5-0 will be the score, unless LDLC forget how to defuse a bomb. Which I don't think <laughs> No, I don't think they will do. And let's have a look at the scoreboard just very quickly as we go into round number six. Kaylee, the top man at the second, six two and oh, he hasn't died yet in this entire game. And, and he exactly emphasizes why he hasn't what... bought up an AWP. He's just been yeah. save he's he's been keeping that uh, M4 that he's had for so many rounds now. Exactly, exactly. So uh, a good decision from him, and that's obviously why he hasn't got that open. It doesn't really seem to matter too much that he hasn't because he's playing well uh, with whatever he's using at the second. One of those players who will just perform up to the top standards when it needs to be done. So here we go, London Conspiracy, they have got enough money to buy here, of course they did get the bomb down, and they did get three frags in that last round, uh, but they need to do something quick here. Quick push onto the upper bomb site. here we go, it looks like it's going to be a fast round potentially coming in, lots of smoke grenades going down, happy in a lovely position, starts things off and takes down Skirk. Rain will respond though, so it's a 4 and 4 things down, in comes the push from LDLC, and they've just got three huge frags in very quick uh, succession, Maniac with two, and it's Polly in a 1 versus 4. He's in a whole world of trouble here, Kai Knight. I think it's going to be 6 0 here in favour of LDLC. There we go. Bomb was down, but not quite enough here for London Conspiracy. Yeah, good solid counter strike from the French. And just to clarify, Chewy, it's LDLC, not Titan. Sorry, I don't know why I said Titan. I was <laughs> not thinking straight there. I do apologise. But uh, on another note, uh, welcome, Darringtons to the uh, sub team thank you very much for subscribing my friend if you guys do want to say hello in the chat and join the discussion uh, come and say hello and uh, subscribe and we would very much appreciate that all well, 19,000 of you so the viewers are going up and up and up which is exactly what we want and uh, hashtag blame Chewy for calling them Titan I don't know what's going on there it's still too early for me alright so back to the game we've got Polly on T-roof Skirk is going to be the man who's going to try and unlock this LDLC defense on ramp room which so far has just been a lone man, and then they seem to, to, to force someone to fall back towards uh, underneath heaven. Which is why we saw LC literally walk into ramp room and plant on the lower bomb site a few rounds ago. So Skirk making all the noise in the world. We have Uzi, who's going to be the man in hut. And so far, slow and methodical yet again from LC. They tried to go for that um, explosive brush on top of the A bomb site, Chewy, last round, but it didn't really work for them. No, it hasn't worked for them, and it would be interesting to see what, what happens if LC go outside, because we haven't really seen them do that yet. We haven't seen them take the bomb through secret and, and go outside yet, and you would have thought, considering the fact that they're 6 or down, that they would try and change things up and do that. And, you know, I'm really liking the setup that LDLC have got up here on the CT side. It looks like that bomb is going to be making its way through ramp room any second now. For some reason, Autodirect is taking us over to Uzi, but here we go. In comes the switch, and have a look at this positioning in. Uh, from the CTs. Maniac is going to be in the corner, but Kaylee, there we go. Now he's got the orb. He's going to pick up one. Happy gets another one, and Kaylee with the second of the round for him. And have a look at that. It just all hell broke loose, and as soon as LDLC pick up one kill, they just seem to be able to get frags on the board within no time whatsoever. Yeah, and again, Kaylee, I thought he did really well. He, he, he went in, got the frag, and even though he was being shot as he ran away, good movement from him, and then he came... He, he went aggressive again and got another frag, and that emphasizes Kaylee's style of warping. 
you know, that aggressive, in-your-face style of orping that we see employed by Kaylee, that we see employed uh, by players like Kenny S. It's really, and Guardian, of course, it's beautiful to watch when it goes right, but PRB, the new LC player, despite managing to get one kill, it looks like we're going to have LC mowed down the Norwegians again, and I don't know what to say to you, I really don't. I feel sorry for London Conspiracy to an extent, but, hey, it's not the end of the world. It's a CT, somewhat CT-sided map. LDLC have only got eight rounds on the board. LC now, if they can win this round, they have enough money to buy, build a bit of momentum, just enter the scoreboard at least, they might be able to bring it back to 8-7 because it's Counter-Strike. And like we saw with Hellraisers and uh, Epsilon, anything yeah. can happen. In a anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen, and, and that's a big thing. But you've got to remember, I'm just having a look at the economy here. It's really not sitting pretty for London Conspiracy. Of course, after that eco, they are able to buy up here, but Kaylee, he's got that AWP and everything that he could possibly ever want, and he's still got over $10,000 in the bank. So, LDLC, you know, they're going to be able to buy up here for a while now, and that's what London Conspiracy have got to take into account here, is that even if the fact that they do pick up a round here and start to get the ball rolling on the T side of Nuke, they know that LDLC have got a lot of money and that they're going to be able to carry that through uh, for at least a couple more rounds after this one does end, no matter which way it goes. So here we go, though. Round number nine. Seven left here in the first half. And it's time for none of the conspiracy to show us what they can do. We know that they can perform at LAN. They really did show us that just a few weekends ago at G3. Of course, LDLC didn't attend that LAN. And we haven't seen LDLC for a while. Um... So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if they can continue this momentum going through the tournament with this fashion. So, uh, I mean, it's a difficult one, kind of, isn't it? Because you do feel sorry for LC, but you know they've got to start picking up their game at some point. Yeah, I think what we're going to see now is an upper bomb site push. Polly's on tier roof. He's going to uh, throw the flashes in through the skybox, and here we go as the Norwegians push straight through this bomb site. Rubino with one, Rain with another, and is this going to be the start of the Norwegian comeback for London Conspiracy? Maybe not as Uzi nails PRB in the head, and Rain he's going to drop down to this lower bomb site, but he's going to say see ya to Maniac before dropping down into the vent. So Chewy, two versus two. The bomb's down on the lower bomb site, and Kay Lee is stuck with that AWP. Yep, this is important here for London Conspiracy to see if they can get this one. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Uzi versus Skirk. Skirk, the man with only one frag in eight and a half rounds, but he's going to pick up his second headshot into Uzi to finish him off. And finally, London Conspiracy will get their first round on the board. That's what they needed. That's the momentum booster there. Welcome and I really like the way that they played that one. And that's finally, for us, showing some resilience. They had a four-on-three man advantage. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, LDLC picked up two big frags, I think, on the upper bomb site. And they made a very quick decision. Let's go down to the lower bomb site, get that bomb down quickly. And they were able to convert off that. This is what we want to see from the Norwegian side. And let's see if they can carry it through into round number 10. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We've got a smoke that's just dispersed itself outside. Skirk is uh, in a bit of a firefight with, I believe it was Happy uh, near Ramp Room. And again, slow methodical is the name of the game for London Conspiracy. Skirk spraying and praying through the smoke, trying to get a, a hit onto Maniac. Got a small hit, but he is still on 76 points of health, so as it stands at the moment, it's still a, a wide open game. Well, again, Skirk is trying to toy with Maniac, whilst Kaylee rotated towards Heaven. He was expecting that. He should be able to get the frag. No! He only managed to leg PRB, but I think he'll be aware of that, Chewie, now, and he'll be calling to his teammates. He'll be saying, right, I spotted a few outside. A few of them have fallen down to secret. Expect either players to come through main or players to drop down through vents and try and hit this B bomb site. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll have to see though, of course, with, uh, I think that's Polly and PRB who are making their way through secret uh, thing stands. Yes, it is, and PRB down to 18 HP, so he's got to be careful. Apex is going to shut things off with the incendiary grenade and just slow them down a bit. And that's an important grenade because look at what it's done. It's forced those two players to come back outside now. In comes the push. Kaylee starts things off with his ult. Rubino responds, but it's all going to be too good here. Coming in, happy with two, Kaylee with two, and PRB, the man left on 18 HP, is going to get finished off in quick style. And even London Conspiracy picking up a big round in round number nine. It's not quite going to be enough for them. LDLC regaining control. We've got an eight round lead heading into round number 11. Score is going to be 9 1. Yeah, 9 1. And 
we, we spoke about the momentum that LC needed to build up because Counter Strike is a physical game as much as it's a mental game. Sorry, as much as it is a physical game. Sure, you've got to be able to aim. Sure, you've got to be a good player, but you need to make sure you keep your head held high when times are tough, like this on a slightly CT-sided map, like this at a massive event where you have a chance of uh, winning $250,000. And so far, LC, they've carried on fighting, but I hate to say it, the M4s are just going to tear them a new one. And it's three versus two. I think Kaylee might be able to sneak an extra frag in here. No, surprisingly missed, but it's going to be the LDLC leader to come in and sweep the rest of them. 10-1. And so far, you know what's coming. Easy peasy. Lemon. Yeah. S squeezy. You meant to say squeezy. Squeezy. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realise. I was right. like, what? Is he like going to say it? Or, or yeah. what was that? I don't even know. But Right, round number 12 we go. Polly's picked up his AWP once again, and LDLC are really in danger of running away with this one here. And uh, it's going to be great for them if they can pick up a huge win here on Nuke. And um, if they can do that, of course, it'll take them through to the winner's match, where they are either going to be facing up against Na'Vi and Copenhagen Wolves. And that match is, I believe, going live in a few seconds' time, if I'm not mistaken. So, here we go. Round number 12 it is. London Conspiracy, well, we've said that they've been needing rounds for quite a while, and they must definitely need this one as well, because we're getting into the end of the first half here. And one round on the board is not good enough, and this round isn't good enough for the Norwegian team as well. Skirk and Rubino, the last two left alive. No frags whatsoever. And there we go. Skirk finally gets one, and Happy is down onto 7 HP. So if they can get some resilience and finish this one off, it will be good. I just have a feeling it's not going to happen, though, as Rubino is in a 1 versus 4 situation now. He's going to spot that player. They know exactly where he is. Nice shot into Happy, though. Apex will shut him down eventually. 11-1 it is. And London Conspiracy, 10 rounds down here. It is possible to come back on the CT side, but, you know, you've got to put up a performance of some sort on the T side here on Nuke to make sure that you can just... Uh, Try and give yourself a boost when going on to the more favoured side here. But London Conspiracy, they're in a whole spot of bother right now. And Canite, once again, we've seen them forced down onto another eco. Yeah, and that's the thing about the CSGO economical system. You, if you fail to make it work to your advantage, it will punish you. And they are going to push straight out towards the A bomb site. Happy gets one. He will get the hat trick. And in comes a fourth. No! Rain manages to get the kill before Kaylee barbecues Rain. And Polly, now last man standing. And he's been sent all the way back to T spawn. I know it was only an eco, but. Hey, we need a bit of excitement mm -hmm. <laughs> in this game based on what we've we seen so far. Yeah, we need to stay is... awake. We've been up exactly. since 6 o'clock in the morning. Exactly, and what is pumping me up is that we've got 23,000 people in the chat watching this game. Thank you so much to everybody tuning in. And a shout out to uh, one of my favourite Twitch names, Burrito in Bread, for subscribing. <laughs> so, welcome to you. Um, Thank um, you um, for um, coming um. on board. I do love a good burrito, so uh, I'm uh, in favour. Shame we're not on name. Inferno. We'd have. A burrito and banana. Right, I know, that would be crazy. Wow, great stuff, kind of like, great stuff. <laughs> Here we go, though, round number 14. It is two more rounds left in the first half. Yep, and LC have done exactly what they did a few rounds ago. They pushed straight into this upper bomb site. Rain, and I think that was Rubinho. They should have had a crossfire on whoever was uh, going to push through main, but they failed to get the kill. But good news, if you're a Norwegian fan, the bomb is down on this upper bomb site. So Uzi and Co., they're going to try and... Uh, Retake this bomb site. I think Uzi will have definitely heard rain to uh, the right of him. Kaylee just behind Uzi in main. He has the AWP, and that smoke is is not really going to let him deal too much damage with it. But look who it is! It's the LDLC leader in Happy, last man standing along with Maniac to try and save the day. And finally, LC have their second round on the board. Took their time, one of but it's here. Yeah, I know, I know. It's <laughs> it's about time to do something. Uh, it's still going to be difficult for them, especially with the performance that we're seeing from LDLC. Okay, yes, this is the last run of the first half, and LDLC will be moving on to the you know the more the less favoured side. I do apologise, but on that note, you know th they need to win a pistol round on the conspiracy in the next round after this one, and they need to do it quickly. Shout out to Rain though; he's got 12 flags and he's performing really, really well. To be fully honest, I felt Rain underperformed at G3, so you know, I interesting. He had a couple of good games, yeah, he had a couple of good he, games. It was on and off. It was really hot and cold with him. When he performed well, he really performed well. But yeah, it was hot and cold. 
But here we go, London Conspiracy are going to stampede towards outside where they are going to finally meet Kaylee. And I mentioned this to you earlier, Chewie. I felt that if, if Kaylee can get the AWP outside and if they fail to eradicate him using smokes, then he'd deal a heck of a load of damage. But so far, that smoke took him out of the picture slightly. He can hear someone shooting him from yellow and down he goes and you were praising rain. And probably rightly so. Kaylee, the first casualty of the last round of the first half here and this is what I wanted to see when well, I mentioned this in about round number six or seven I think it was about I really wanted to see what London Conspiracy could do if they pushed Push secret and, and went secret, outside yeah. And they've not really done it as a full team. We've had a couple of players explore down there, and then they just get shut off by an incendiary grenade and back away and go, nope, I'm having none of that. But Polly, at the wrong time, decides to take away his AWP, and Maniac's going to shut him down, so that's going to even up the situation. It's a 4-on-4. Four four. In comes the push from the T's. Apex, lovely kill there. Up onto Rubino, and he's going to get his second one. That's skirt down, all left in the hands of Rain. He's a great player, but I don't think he's quite going to be able to finish him up. LDLC go into the end of the first half. 13 to 2 and as much as I love the London Conspiracy squad and respect how well they've been doing recently not the start that they would have wanted here at ESL 1 Cologne no, unfortunately unfortunately not at all and just so people know because there's a lot of people who are asking about drops we are an official ESL partnered stream so providing that you've linked your Steam account with your Twitch account you should be eligible for drops out of this game yeah, that's all you need to do. that sums it up for you guys. So don't worry. Yeah. Just so you know, it doesn't increase your chances of getting a drop if you watch us and watch the official stream at the same time. Um, so yeah, you don't need to, for example, keep another one minimized and muted just because you think you, 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 you'll have a higher chance of getting a drop or to have your game running in the background sat in GoTV because you want a drop. No, it doesn't work like that. But anyways, 13-2 and Chewy, wow. Um, you see, the thing is, you were talking about how important the pistol round was going to be for LDLC. And to be fully honest with you, like I said earlier on, from what I've seen in recent weeks, the mass majority of the pistol rounds on these slightly CT-sided maps, like Nuke, like Inferno, mm. still end up going in favour of the terrorists. We had a rare occurrence this time round where LDLC, because they've been playing as well as they have been, um, managed to win the pistol round as counter-terrorists. But if you ask me, I think they can capitalise on this terrorist side. If they can win the pistol round, they only need three more rounds to win. So win the pistol round, don't mess up the next two where you have the money advantage, and... They won't even have to go into any gun rounds as far as the second half is concerned. No, I think, you know, I, I really don't want to sound biased here, um, but I, well, I think we'll it's already... it how it is. Yeah, exactly, and I, I think it's almost GG's. You know, 13-2 is a crazy score, and, you know, again, mentioning the, the G3 final, Virtus Pro down 12-3 uh, on the T side and then came back to win 16-12. So I it think what's is important possible. in, in Counter-Strike is never say never. Yeah, And when I course. said this to Cadian the other day, when I was casting with Cadian, he started talking about Justin Bieber. And I told him, well, I had no idea it was a Justin Bieber song, as far as I was aware. It's a song from one of the old James Bond movies. So, again, seriously speaking now, you can never say never in Counter-Strike. 13-2, it's still game on for London Conspiracy. And if they want to fight back, they can start off by winning this pistol round. This is crucial for them. Uh, see what the Norwegians can do. Only one player buying up armor. Skirk with the only defuse kit on the field. Three armors coming in for LDLC to start things off. And we've got a couple of CZ75s and a 5.7 as well here for the CT side. Okay, so let's see how this round looks out. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. And London Conspiracy, they need this round. We can't really emphasize it enough and you know we love those pistol rounds, we love how important uh, they are because they really can be such a determining factor but PRP is going to have to push back here, he's going to get absolutely stormed from the CT squad, it's a one for one trade, now Apex is going to finish off Rubino here and they've got a clear entry onto that B-bomb site pretty much, it's going to have to be a three versus four retake, Kaylee and Apex picking up the CZ75s but are they actually going to go down? towards the lower bomb site. Doesn't look so but Skirk's aware of that. He unfortunately misses his shot with that USP and he's Ooh. gonna get punished for it. Kaylee shuts him down. Polly's gonna get finished down any second too if Maniac can finish his shots. Yes he can. It's a one versus three here for the man of the match for London Conspiracy so far, which is Rain. Thirteen and fourteen for him is kill death ratio. But I don't think it's gonna be too far past him. Sorry, too far past him if I can speak properly. Too far and past him. I'm not I even like sure that. what I'm speaking right now, but Apex finishes things off.
And I think that could be game, I'm afraid, Kai Knight. LDLC 14 2 up here now. They've got the, the better weapons in their arsenal. They're only two rounds away from knocking on the conspiracy down into the losers match. That's what you did there, you know, with you being an Arsenal fan. Their Arsenal trying to, hey. trying to, trying to do to a, bit, a bit of marketing for your favourite football team. Evidently what it was. <laughs> talking about betting, actually, quickly, uh, I, I'm doing really well with my bet so far for the stickers. I haven't no been cares. able to put anything on the CSGO Absolutely. lounge. But, uh, you know, my sticker bets are going well. I'm aiming for that gold trophy, so uh, we'll, we'll see if I'm going to be able to finish it off. Good luck, gonna bro. start things off though. Yeah, this is gonna be rain to start things off. He managed to get one kill. Of course, he's picked up that Galil because without the LC winning the pistol round as uh, we expected them to do, it's uh, given them a bit more money in the bank. It's allowed them to buy up these stronger rifles, and in theory, they're only up against pistols. And London Conspiracy have done exactly what LDLC did to them in the sense that they left ramp room completely empty. Yeah, they did indeed. So, as it stands, it's a 4-5 and five situation. Still the man in favour of the Norwegians. And uh, Polly's actually rewarded himself. He's got that Galil in hand. Apex is aware of what's going on down here, though, and he's going to put shots down range. But we've only got 36 seconds left on the clock here, Kaino. And this is looking potentially good here for the Norwegians. No, it's not. LDLC respond with three quick frags. And it's all <laughs> going to be left in the hands of Polly. And this is exactly shows what they can do. Even on the T side here, they can just play it patiently. And it's going to be an anti-eco win here by the looks of things, unless Polly can do something absolutely crazy miraculous. So one versus four, the bomb's being planted as well, and this is going to put LDLC on to match point. Polly does pick up one though, he's going to pick up the second. No, he's not, he gets shut down. LDLC one single round away from advancing through to the Group B winner's match. You see, it was the timing from LDLC, the player in Maniac who pushed Ramp Room towards Under Heaven and went up the ladder. He tied it to perfection along with, uh, I think it was either Kaylee or Apex who was pushing through Squeaky. One of them was pushing through Squeaky and I think the other was pushing through Hut. So the CT, who was occupied on top of the A bomb site, was completely surrounded and he, c he can't focus on three different places at the same time. Um, and that's something we saw LC lacking a little bit. It seemed like their communication was a bit off. It is their first game. Obviously, they are, I wouldn't say a new side, but a new side amongst the elite, if you will. And uh, maybe they need a, need a bit more time to get used to participating in such a large event with so much at stake like this, where all the other big teams have come in nice and hot and ready and ready to rock and roll and... With, with tons of practice under their belt, unlike G3, where a lot of teams had directly just come back from holiday and thought to themselves, right, we fancy a holiday in sunny old London, let's head off to G3 and have a, a small <laughs> LAN event for, for the sake of it. But here we go, LDL City Chewy are going to go to this lower bomb site, and what do you think? You think they can do it? Uh, I want them to do it. You know, I really want uh, it to be a, a good round here. We've only seen 18 rounds where we're in the 18th round, and you know, we thought that this game could be pretty close. Having a look at the stats and how these teams lined up uh, before, and obviously the bets that were going down, it looked like it could be a relatively close game. But LDLC, of course, starting on that more favoured CT side was the thing that really got them going here, and it's all ready that they're going to be in trouble. Although, as things stand, it is a three versus two situation. Polly and Rubino, the last two CT sides left alive. Rubino's got to try and find one but he doesn't and that kill really does just describe the game uh, Apex is going to finish things up and uh, London Conspiracy really didn't show us what they were made of there unfortunately and have a look at that scoreboard wow Apex only dying three times in 18 rounds <laughs> you're not going to be able to win any games when you've got a player performing on the opposition side like that 16-2 is your score London Conspiracy down to the losers, team, uh, losers game sorry and LDLC advancing through to play the winner of Navi and Copenhagen Wolves and that game's actually live at the second on Inferno the score currently being 4-1, I do believe, in favour of Navi. Yeah, no surprise there. But I'll tell you what, just before we uh, we head off after this match, let's take a look at the groups, because it's what we did uh, for Group A, if I can just maximise. Right, there we go. Group B, we've got LDLC, Navi, Copenhagen Wolves, and London Conspiracy. Now, Chewy, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you last time around. Yeah. Uh, taking a look at that group, who would you put first, second, third, and fourth? First, second, third, and I can't even talk with that. First, <laughs> second, third, and fourth is going to be a difficult one, I think, with this group. And it's what Semler was saying earlier on. This is one of those groups that it's kind of just quarters for each team. You know, out of four teams, each has got a quarter of finishing in, in a certain position. I think after that last game, that's really given some sort of indication about what it potentially could be. And in all honesty, 
I have a feeling that it could end up with how it looks on the group right now that you've got up on the screen. I think LDLC are going to take it. I think they're going to finish first. I think Navi are going to finish second. And in all honesty, I think it could be a toss-up between London Conspiracy and Copenhagen Wolves finishing third and fourth. London Conspiracy, we know that they can bounce back and that they can perform well. But after only getting two rounds on the board there against LDLC, I, d I just don't think it's going to work, if I'm quite honest. I, I don't think that they've come into this tournament exactly how they wanted to have done. Um, so it is a shame for the Norwegians. They had a great showing at G3, but uh, we'll see what they can do. I think one thing that's worth noticing is that the, the ESL format, as opposed to the G3 format, gives you a lot less room for, for error. Yeah. Like for example, the G3 format, where you have huge groups and each group... Uh, e each team in each group plays each other at least once and you have I think it was six teams in each group and the top four go through so you have room for error you have room to lose a game or maybe lose two games if you end up winning the other three whilst here at ESL you don't get that same room for error London Conspiracy now they're gonna drop down and they're gonna face the loser of Navi and Copenhagen Wolves if they lose that game, it's good night Vienna or good night Oslo in their case. And they'll <laughs> be going home. Um, as for Group 3, I believe we're going to be bringing Virtus Pro versus Dat next up. I'm not 100% sure. Still waiting for the guys in Cologne to confirm it. But I think that's going to be it from us as far as Group B is concerned. And guys, honestly, we appreciate any subs, appreciate any follows, um, be it on Twitter or... Uh, if you follow the Twitch channel, and uh, we'll see I've you guys in a few hours' time. Yeah, I've just got a very quick note. Thank you so much to everybody who is following the channel, because I'm not sure, if Kainite, you've looked at the stats, but at the start of this game, we were on five, th uh, sorry, 10,600 followers, and I've just refreshed the stream, and we're over 17,000 followers on the Twitch channel, which is absolutely unreal. We've gained 10,000 followers just with the first two games of the day alone, so thank you so much to all of you for tuning in, following the channel, and saying hello. Anyway, guys, we're going to go for a quick break before the next game, which, as um, Kyanite says, is probably going to be the Verdus Pro match. We will have to see, though, but in the meantime, thank you for watching, and we will be back as soon as possible.